Thank you. Is this on? Everybody hear me? Yeah. yeah. Right on. So um, first, I want to just thank you all for being here. You could be next door listening to Levin talk about some really brilliant stuff about uh, customer service. But instead, you decided to be here and listen to me talk about a subject I'm very passionate about, the value of logos. Um, it's my first WordCamp so that I get to speak at. So I appreciate you specifically as this audience. Um, again, we're here to talk about the value of logos. Everybody's in the right room? Cool. Um, to save you the time of Googling what a logo is, just so we have some baseline for our conversation, if you type that into Google, um, you will learn quickly that a logo, according to Google's uh, definition, is a symbol or other design uh, adopted by an organization to identify its products, uniform, or vehicles. I like this definition, sort of. I think it's a bit too specific. Products, uniforms. Do you guys wear uniforms? I don't know. So I'm going to do that and cross that out and just say, a logo is a symbol or other design adopted by an organization to identify itself. Kind of all come to terms with that. Cool. Um, we also call logos uh, emblems, trademarks, brands, although that's kind of a bigger conversation. A lot of us probably know, but we call them these things. Insignias, marks, symbols, seals. Um, the root of the word logo is kind of interesting. It comes from uh, the Greek logos. I might be pronouncing that wrong, but regardless, um, it was used to uh, talk about words or speech or justification or reason, narrative. Um, going back into ancient Greek, it was used to describe, or it means I say. Logo means I say. And we see it, in, again, in Christianity come up um, in the description of the Holy Trinity, uh, God's word, uh, his son, was named Logo. So it's kind of some big shoes to fill. Um, logo means the word, literally what we speak. So we're talking about the value of logos. And I don't necessarily mean value in terms of money, although that's obviously part of it, but not necessarily all of it. Uh, logos are valuable uh, in the sense, for one big reason, is that they represent the voice and the mission of an organization. We're all very familiar with this logo. Um, one of the things we think about as far as their mission is innovation, although they might deny it. A lot of us think about uh, the apple falling from the tree, Sir Isaac Newton, uh, invention, innovation. Um, the logo also represents uh, education. Uh, a lot of people think about apples in, in education. It's something people all kind of universally relate to. If you think of an alphabet book when you're a kid, the very first thing you see is A for apple. Um, and that was intentional. Uh, Steve Jobs, in fact, wanted the apple to be something accessible. Uh, and so this is a way of him to get this in schools. For all of you who went to school in the 80s, you might remember Apple computers were the first ones we saw. Um, these logos represent the value of their organizations. Both sell cars, but we can see clearly the one, the Chevy logo, is about structure, integrity. It's kind of bulky. It kind of looks like a pickup truck almost. Mercedes-Benz is much more elegant, pristine, balanced. Um, again, both selling cars, but both representing different uh, values of the organization. The uh, famous Playboy Bunny represents this organization's uh, kind of friskiness, sort of, uh, it's, it's tongue in cheek. It's also though sophisticated. It's got, it's got a bow tie on, for God's sake. It's a, it's, a bunny, it's a bunny in a tuxedo. And this was a very intentional, and I think a really smart decision by Hugh Hefner um, back in the 1960s. He chose the bunny because his competitors, the New Yorker and Esquire magazine, use men as their logos. I can't even think of what the Esquire or New Yorker magazine's logos are, but I know what the Playboy one looks like, and that shows you as just forward thinking on, on our friend Hughes' part. Um, logos communicate directly to their audience. This logo, at least for me, says children, friendly, happy, it's inviting, it's friendly. Um, this logo, on, by contrast, represents, I don't know, perhaps people who have cufflinks or, or, or have their initials in their name. This is Rolls Royce, and it's, it's very, uh, very classy in that sense, and it um, shows that. This logo is representing to people who are interested in an alternative to a supermarket. You know, you think of Vaughn's logo, and Vaughn's logo is very, I think it's like Futura or something, it's very, or Helvetica. It represents a supermarket, and, and Whole Foods has a, a leaf in it. I mean, it looks healthy. It even looks like maybe a hand-drawn or maybe wood-carved old sign and kind of has that represented feeling from that. So those are communicating directly to their audience. Um, another thing that makes logos valuable is that they influence people. In fact, they have the power to 
to motivate action and stand for an entire movement. Um, this is the peace symbol. I think we've all probably seen this. And in fact, it originally was the design of the Center for Nuclear Disarmament um, in the 1960s, and it later became adopted by the peace movement. The designer was OK with that. The peace movement shared very similar values um, with, his, with his, uh, his mission. Um, what was interesting, at least in my research, was the, uh, I guess, its inspiration for making the, the piece or the, the logo for the Center for Nuclear Disarmament. Uh, the designer talks about a painting he saw of Goya's where a peasant is standing before a firing squad. Um, that's the painting. We kind of see who the firing squad is here. And you can see the symbol of his arms outstretched, um, almost in surrender. And even though it may be opposite or flipped, you can then see the similarities between the logo and that. And it's amazing that we can just look at this shape, and we say the words peace, and that was the inspiration it came from, and how that is impacted through just the shape. Um, does everybody know what this is? <laughs> Japan, thank you. Does everybody know what this is? Japanese Imperial, yeah, the Imperial Army of Japan, Japanese Imperial Navy, I believe, to be specific. This symbol is considered offensive to a lot of people um, in southern China and Korea, where uh, they basically had occupation from, uh, unwanted occupation from Japan during World War II. Um, but you might not know this, and in fact, in Beijing in 2008, people were told not to wear the symbol at sporting events during the Olympics. Um, but you could just be a naive American and walk into Japan and buy this t-shirt in Asahi, Japan, where they actually still sell this, and say, hey, can I come a cool Japanese t-shirt? But you don't know what it means. I think it's really amazing just to do this to this, and now we're conveying an emotional response in people. I think it's very impactful and powerful. Um, this is Shepherd Fairies Obey. I think a lot of people see this. This represents a movement of counterculture. And in fact, his intention was to make a logo that meant nothing. So therefore, it's widely interpreted. It means a lot to a lot of people. He talks about this um, in his manifesto. So again, the value of logos, it motivates people. It can actually like, stand for your entire movement. You get it tattooed to your body. Um, so flyers become litter. Magazines get recycled. Your website's going to go out of date in two years, three years tops. But that's about how long websites last. Unlike those types of design, a logo is timeless. Uh, this is the GE logo, going back from 1892. It's a long time ago. Um, we can we can see it happening. It's 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 the lineage. It didn't change a lot from 1969 to 2015. In fact, it's just those little swirly things that I can see. But it's it's amazing. It it sticks with them. Uh, Volkswagen looks like since the 1940s they were actually trying to extract and use a reductive approach to get to what their symbol really was. Um, it's been the same thing for a long time. Coca-Cola's bookkeeper in 19, or I'm sorry, in 1866, wrote that because he had great handwriting, and that logo has stuck around till today. You can go to a lot of countries and see that logo everywhere, and know exactly what it means. Um, a logo is valuable because it has a global appeal. It can actually connect a, com a company to a logo uh, with not even using a name. And in fact, over time, the name can be dropped. And we still recognize this logo sort of as a visual language or a universal global language. Uh, this is one of the longest running Starbucks logos. They've used other ones. But up until about 1992, it more or less looked like this. And from 1992 to 2011, Starbucks was not convinced that if they did not write the word Starbucks and coffee on that logo, that you would know what that was. And in 2011, they dropped that. And now you can see that symbol anywhere in the world and know you're getting coffee. Same with McDonald's, 1962 to 2003. They're like, oh no, don't take McDonald's off of those golden arches. No one will have any clue what that is. And in 2003, they did it. And now that's its own symbol, its own language. Um, so you want to ask yourself now, what are some signs and symptoms of a good logo? Um, a logo, I love this quote, and so I'm going to just paraphrase, but a logo must be original and simple in form, must have a very high degree of memorability, and it must be easily recognized and noticeable. Well, that's a lot of stuff. And not every logo has all those characteristics, and that's what makes making a logo hard. Um, these examples on the right, I think, actually do have all those characteristics. The one on the top is your favorite rock band. Um, the one in the middle delivers your mail, and the one on the bottom spies on you, or <laughs> shows you your nightly news. But, but regardless, again, like they, they are all very memorable. They're all very original and distinct, and they're all just shapes. Isn't that crazy? It's just, it's just you're moving a shape, and you're like, that's the stones. That's Mick Jagger's mouth, maybe. Um, so a good logo also creates desirable associations 
and avoids negative ones. Um, this is Hillary Clinton's logo. Came out just a couple, I already hear the laughter, it's great. This, this got really ridiculed in the press. People, people just jumped on her. They said, hey, Hillary, this looks like FedEx, or why is that red arrow moving to the right? What are you, like, aren't you a Democrat? Like, why are you, why are you doing this? And, and so, so to be fair, I kind of like the logo. I, I don't know, I think, I think it's nice. Um, and I, let's just play fair and compare her to her competition as of now. Um, so, so we have Bernie Sanders running. Um, his logo for me is very standard political kind of logo. We've seen this a lot. Maybe the one star represents his being an independent, and that's cool. Um, Paul Rand's logo. By the way, only Paul Rand's logo and Hillary Clinton's logo were vector graphics available on their websites for you people who know what that means, but kind of interesting. Huh? I think you mean Rand Paul. I did mean Rand Paul. Thank you for correcting me. Sorry. Um, you can't practice enough. Um, but his, his liberty symbol, I, I like the sort of Statue of Liberty burning thing. I don't find it highly original, but it's, it's, it's a valid symbol. Ted Cruz's, I don't know if that's a crying teardrop flag thing. <laughs> Really not sure. And Mark Rubio's, I, I gotta, I gotta just diss Mark Rubio. I don't think he was planning on getting votes from Alaska or Hawaii, or he forgot those were states and it didn't matter to him, but regardless. Um, so, so just in this contest alone, not to be political, we're just talking about logos. I think Hillary takes the cake for, for this, but that's just about logos. Um, a good logo should also work in one color. Color will never, ever, ever save a bad design. It will only enhance a good one. Uh, these. This, these three logos, Twitter, and Instagram, and Facebook, are proof of this. You see these logos on every ugly website with terrible color palettes and flyers and taxi cabs everywhere, and you still know what they are. They hold up, and I have a lot of respect for these designers thinking about how these logos had to be workhorses, and they had to hold up under all these terrible color palettes. So the color does not make the logo. The design makes the logo. A good logo should also be legible when scaled in size everywhere from a billboard down to your itty bitty little phone. Imagine a favicon on a phone. Aren't favicons like 16 by 16 pixels? And now we're putting them on a phone? And you've got to know what that is? It's amazing. This is um, Burton Snowboard's logo, which is one of my favorites. Um, again, big banners on the side of half pipes, snowboard stickers. It's got to, got to look on good in all sizes. Um, so now your questions. How do I make a good logo, Andrew? What do I do? I have my approach. I'll share it with you. Um, I ask questions to my clients. Um, I ask my clients, let's pretend I'm looking for Ted's dog food. So who is who's XYZ? Who is Ted's dog food? Who is, who is your company? Um, what does Ted's dog food want to communicate, emphasize, or project? Should anything be de-emphasized or avoided? What logo is being used now? Why doesn't it work? I don't have a logo. It doesn't work. Um, how does your competition identify itself? What makes Ted's dog food different from the competition? Why is, is your is Ted dog food organic? Maybe maybe those are something that's gluten-free dog food. Um, are there any obvious visuals associated with Ted's dog food, or initials, TDF, or endeavors? Meaning, like, is your logo saying is doing something like feed the world? I, I have a visual of a spoon feeding the earth. Those kind of ideas are great to write down in kind of a brainstorm session, and you can get all these ideas together, and it's a great place to, to look for that kind of inspiration. Um, who's your target audience? Is this going to change over time? So after I get those questions down, and we're now talking about your business, hopefully in a way you've never thought of before, I approach building a concept with different styles. So asking myself, what if my company, Ted's Dog Food, was only type? What kind of font would I use? Who's Ted's Dog Food's mascot? Is it a dog? Is it Ted? Who knows? Maybe it's both. Let's try them both. Um, what kind of letters would be used? Uh, this company was a logo, or its logo was a monogram. So what we're going to do is look at some examples of companies that do this well. So for example, with logo type, um, all typography shows you just how different all these companies are. Comparing like Vanity Fair in the upper left-hand corner to L.L. Bean, both are talking about fashion, but one's very high-end and almost like Art Deco looking, the Vanity Fair where Aloe Bean can be any more conservative and sort of non-risky. Um, Iron Maiden versus Walt Disney. Where would you take your kids for the weekend to go on a ride? I mean, it's clearly like one's metal. Um, uh, Fender looks like a hand-drawn logo, handmade guitars. Would you put your money in Wells Fargo or Kleenex? Kleenex looks soft. Yeah, Kleenex, <laughs> <laughs> it's soft, but it looks like something like they're hand-done. Thanks, but great. It's one in every crowd. I like it. Um, <laughs> um, so maybe your logo is a monogram uh, of composed of initials. 
Uh, the one on the top left is my favorite baseball logo, the Detroit Tigers. A lot of baseball teams. Oh, come to, baseball logo. Logo. We're not talking about politics or sports yet. That can get to happy hour. Um, our beloved WordPress has a great monogram logo. Again, scales really good. Looks good as a favicon and all that. Motown Records um, has a great monogram. The Wu-Tang Clan. Anybody like the Wu-Tang Clan? So, yes. Yes, my people. Um, Beats by Dre. Uh, I like that, that that's a monogram and it looks like the headphone on a head. I mean, it's just me, but I think that's intentional. If you've uh, stepped outside in the last two years, you've seen Under Armour everywhere. Um, that's the athletic gear. And so it's a, it's a great monogram, highly recognizable. Uh, maybe your logo could be a myth, something imaginary or, or legendary, fictitious. Um, there's apparently a girl who walks around, has salt rolled on her head all day long, and spills it everywhere, and she brings your salt. Um, or she doesn't exist. Uh, the one in the middle is a griffin, I believe. That's for chrome backpacks, where you messenger hipsters in here who have that backpack. Again, I don't think a griffin exists, but he represents this messenger bag company. Uh, the one on the right, many of you may be met. He makes beer in San Diego. It's a devil for stone brewing. Um, I'm just kidding. It's a fictitious character. That's what we're on. Not a real person. Anyway, myth, fictitious characters. Um, maybe your logo could also be an analogy. Is a great way to think about this. Uh, using one thing to suggest another. Three circles, totally different things. Uh, the one on the right, AT&T, is bringing your universe together and connecting you. Uh, the one in the middle, steal your face, or is the Grateful Dead's logo. That's how you maybe feel before, during, or after a Grateful Dead concert. Um, the one on the far right is, is Target. Again, it's like the bullseye. It's the place you go if you need a place to buy your underwear or deodorant or whatever. You go to Target. It's a spot. You can see it from a mile away on the highway. You're like, ah, oh, there it is. Um, your logo, again, could be maybe a mascot. Animals are great mascots. Um, or yourself. Michael Jordan is his own mascot. Um, that polo symbol. Gosh, it looks, I, want, I don't get a chance to look at it. It's big. It's really pretty. Because you always see it on shirts, right? Um, so the mascot is almost like the kind of uh, what they're trying to convey with their, with their logo. Uh, the World Wildlife Fund um, uses an excellent animal. You can pick a better animal than a panda for the World Wildlife Fund. Um, maybe your logo is literal. Maybe it's exactly what it is. Uh, the one on the far left is square. That's what square looks like. It looks like the device. Um, the one in the center, we all seen Ghostbusters. Uh, that's, they, they bust ghosts. They're, they don't fix your toilet. They, that's what they do. If you bust ghosts, that's the guy I'll call them the yellow pages. For, we still use those. Um, I use a lot of sports logos. Toronto Blue Jays, um, it's a Blue Jay with a maple leaf. Toronto Blue Jays, literally what it says it is. Um, your logo could be a diagram. It depict, could depict a process. Um, yin yang, very familiar, balance. Uh, the walk symbol. I find it really distasteful when I go to a city and I see a walk symbol and they don't have the hand to stop. Instead what they do is they flip this from, from a white light to a red light with the, with the person. And I was like, well, if you're colorblind, how would you know? I think that's just kind of it's poor design, poor user interface experience. Um, the recycling symbol, uh, reduce, reuse, and recycle. There's three parts to recycling, not just throwing your stuff in a blue bin. Um, the Rebus is a, is a hard logo to, to pull off, and I didn't find a lot of great examples of it, but it should be talked about. Um, the Isle of New York by Paul Rand is probably one of the most famous uh, types of these logos. Again, when you're trying to replace a letter using a symbol. Um, the 007 one, I realize, isn't quite that, but I think it's a great logo and worth sharing with you. It looks great on a big board. Um, I just recommend that when you design a logo, you use a reductive and simplistic approach. And I think you can see by a lot of the examples we're looking at, not a lot of detail. You know, the, the concept will drive what you're trying to sell. You don't necessarily need, you know, a dog with a collar and his name. It's, it's not going to hold up. Work on, the, work on a concept and work on something very simple. You can do a lot with that. Um, I like the way Ernest Hemingway talks about writing stories, and I think that relates a lot to designing a logo, where he says, you know, take out all, the, write the story, take out all the good lines, and see if it still works. I think that's a great, great thing to think, keep in mind. So now your question is, how much does a good logo cost? Five dollars. You got it. <laughs> On Fiverr, you can get a logo for five bucks. And I was shocked. I was like, well, that's great, because they seem like really hard things to make. So for five bucks, heck, I'm going to go for it. Um, so I came up with a company, this isn't really a company, but this is my fake company, called the Norman Car. It's an electric car for the people. And so I went on Fiverr and I, I, I sent out some, I said, I want some logos for my company. I hired three designers I handpicked to make a logo for my company. Um, the Norman Car was named after my black lab, Norman, who used to like to ride in cars. I've again never owned a dog, but 
This is the inspiration. I was trying to give them some visuals to work with. Family owned, built in the USA, a less sporty version of the Tesla, but more traditional than a Prius. Kind of like an electric Chevy, maybe, somewhere in the middle. Uh, target household income, $200,000. I make an expensive car. Um, I really like Apple and GE's logos and Audi's logos, some real classic stuff they could work with. Um, I kind of threw them a thing here. I said, I want it unique and innovative, modern, classic. Traditional with a twist, just like your client would treat you. You know, make it make it old but new. Can you do that? <laughs> Pour some glitter on it. Um, it had to work in black and white because we're making hundreds of cars. There's gonna be all different types of colors, so this logo has to hold up. But I like orange and blue and brown since they asked on the form. I just put in some colors I liked. So um, anyhow, 18 hours later, <laughs> I get that. Um, this is actually a dot that was on the graphic as a pixel. I didn't clean it off just because I wanted to include it. It came with the artwork. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know. Um, day number two, my second designer quit, or three days later. He said he didn't have any good ideas for you, so at least he had some integrity. He's like, this guy's asking for way too much for five bucks. Like, I'm done. I need to move on. He tried to refund. I haven't got my money back, but that's, that's fine. Um, number, six days later, I got this, which is starting to be something. I'm not entirely sure what. I really appreciate that they took so much time picking a font. I'm done, I'm done picking on. This is as big as I could get some of these logos, too, because, again, they weren't vector, they weren't black and white, whatever. So that's what five bucks, that's what $15, hold on, $16.25 with fees gets you. There's your $5 logo. Um, Carolyn Davidson got paid 35 bucks for the Nike logo uh, when she was a student. Talk about exploiting a student. You got paid 35 bucks for the logo. Now, here's what's worse. Phil Knight said to her, he didn't love it. It'll grow on him. So, so to redeem Phil, in the 80s, he gave Carolyn a envelope full of Nike stock. So you talk about the biggest hero ball in the history of design, and a client that, clients don't know anything, man. They, they, they will never, Phil Knight didn't understand the value of logos. There's proof. And she got her payback, and that's great. But you should demand more than 35 bucks out the gate. Just, just do it. Do it for all of us. So my point is the value of a logo. A logo does not cost the same amount as a cup of coffee. That's, can we like, come to that conclusion? So the next time we're all sitting there in front of our client and we have this blank WordPress theme and you say to your client, hey, what do you use for a logo? And they go, oh, don't, no, we don't really have a logo. Can you just, just toss something in there? Just toss something on the website? Don't do that. <laughs> because when you do that, that's on every page of the website. That's the whole thing. You've, you've, you just, a logo is not a salad. It is not something one tosses together. Explain that to your client. Logos should be crafted like a sculpture. A logo is art. Oops. This is crafted like a sculpture. This is the logo for Tiffany & Company. It's designed by Louis Philly, and I think it's, it's exquisite. It's beautiful. Again, just shapes. Isn't that amazing? I don't know, I'm fascinated with the art. Um, when she designed this, uh, she was considering that it had to be small enough for a man's watch or large enough for a construction shed. I don't know why she didn't say billboard. Maybe they're doing some Tiffany & Company thing with construction sheds. I don't know what that meant. But the point is big, small, and she put that much thought into it. Did not toss it together. Um, logos are valuable because they drive the entire look and feel of your website, from the fonts to the colors you pick, the branding, everything. Uh, this is a client I worked on recently. I redid their logo a little bit, just gave it some touch up. They're called Trek to Teach. They send uh, college students to Nepal to teach English uh, to small schools in Nepal. And when we broke down the logo and added some colors inspired from Tibetan flags, you can see it, it, it carried through the whole website, the colors and everything. Every page on the website is a different color, and it all matches the logo, and it really it drove the whole, the whole thing. So a logo is possibly one of the best design investments your company will ever make in ter terms of retaining its value over time. Again, just to bring the point home, Warner Brothers has had just about the same logo since 1935. Um, you think about all the equipment they bought. They had to buy that camera in 1940. That camera is in a museum or junk, but the logo is still there, and and that says a lot. Um, it's, it's what they're still holding on to. Actors have died, all that stuff, but the logo still holds on. Um, my name's Andrew Bergeron. I'm from Visual Rhythm. I'm a web branding graphic UI designer down in La Jolla, California. Um, you can find me on visualrhythm.com and all those various social media outlets. And that's it. <laughs> Any questions? Yes? Do you know the story of why it's a girl holding salt with the umbrella? <laughs>
I don't. Do you know it? I do. Please share. And the story is that because uh, salt sticks together when mm. it's wet out, it's mm. called plump. And the point that they're trying to make is when it rains, our salt still pours because they've added ionized uh, particles to it nice. to stop it from plumping. Nice. Cool. I love it. Very cool. It's so much fun to study logos. I recommend if you guys like any company or curious, type in. There's a lot out there on Wikipedia and companies put their backgrounds as their logos. So fun. Yes. Sorry. How do you how do you feel about the noun project and and similar things? Um, I'm guessing that's where one of your icons is from. Maybe not. Um, I'm not sure what the noun project is. So noun project is the open source repository of uh, logos and, and graphics. Right? Okay. Sure. They're basic things like uh, you know. Thousand different coffee cups, or um, oh, a hundred different basketballs. So, sure. what do you think about using that as? I use it all the time. As as a designer, I mean, when I have to get like a picture of a sea lion, I am online looking for a free one. I mean, I could sit there and draw it by hand, and if someone has the budget for me to sit there and vectorize a sea lion, that's great. <laughs> but a good designer, I think uses their tools as fast as possible and you can oftentimes create and manifest something that does look totally unique you know it's as, it's as fun as like when you're a little kid and you have just a couple of little things and you put them together and each little kid makes a different craft or sculpture that's kind of i guess that's maybe my take on it a good miles in the back um, you said you like sports logos a lot yeah sure yeah Absolutely. Yeah, and to be clear, a lot of the stuff I'm talking about with like monograms and logo types, those are just styles. That shouldn't actually dictate the concept. In fact, a good concept will work with many styles. Like you're saying, like the New York Yankees has a monogram, but then it also has it written in the Yankees. There's even an old one of the baseball and the hat on it. And if you can come up with this concept that works in these different styles, you can apply it to different things. Because again, like the Yankees typeface wouldn't work as a favicon or a small icon on a Twitter feed. So, so I recommend using like a, a list of like marketing questions like I went through and then you, you gain a concept and then you can try the logo out in different styles. Maybe start with one and then build more as you go. Disney has a thousand different logos, you know, the mouse and the Walt Disney and the Magic Kingdom and all that. Oh, sure. Uh, <laughs> Oh, so oh, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. I haven't been repeating. Uh, so his question was, how much? How much is a good price to pay for a logo? Depends. It, it, what's that? Five bucks. Yeah, it, it depends. It depends on the use. It depends on the size of the company. Um, it, it varies. You know, I mean, I've seen some very high prices for logos. It's it's a hard one to answer. I'm going to say more than five bucks. More than five hundred dollars. But then again, if you're a designer and you want a job and you want to build your portfolio and get a five hundred dollar logo and you kick butt at it, then great, then the client wins. But if, if you're spending a thousand, two thousand dollars and you're a small business, that's a fair price, I think, in a lot of ways to pay for a logo. And I mean small business like less than ten employees, I guess. Corporate people. And they're gonna use their logo for more things, like Coca Cola for example. I wouldn't charge less than twenty, thirty thousand dollars, I would imagine, for something that big and if it was like, oh yeah, we're building a new Norman car, it's gonna compete with Tesla, sure, you want something that's gonna really hold up. So Oh, right there, sure. No, I usually charge a flat rate, to be honest. I don't find a lot. Oh, <laughs> well, I, 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 well I, I, in the scope of work, I explain to them it's if whatever revisions we agree to then, and if they want to go over, then it's an hourly rate, and that usually is enough to scare them. And if they're paying, if they're being picky enough, then I just say like, hey, I'm happy to do this. I'll do this as many times as you want. I love making logos. I'll do it all day, but it's just going to increase the scope of work. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, a vector graphic, for those of you who don't know, so there's vector and rasterized. Uh, rasterized is, is small pixels like you get in Photoshop, like a photograph. A vector graphic is built on an X and Y axis. So with that said, you can scale the graphics in, in as big as you want or as small as you want because a vector graphic doesn't lose resolution. Does that That's more or less? Important. Yeah. Yes. Often you have to build that into the scope of work because I've gotten old logos. I've had a, a client who did a, a lovely logo for a bed and breakfast in Vermont, and it was a, a wooden sign of a loon, like a hand carving of a loon. 
and they took a picture of it and said, here, make, here's the logo. <laughs> Great, but yeah, I, had to, I had to charge and to vectorize it, and it came out beautiful. And I get to I get to look at this whoever did this beautiful wood sign and really see his angles and stuff and rebuild that. So it's fun to do that. Sometimes those Norman car ones would have been a nightmare because those were none of those were vector. But I'm not picking on those designers. They, they, but anyway, you know, so did you? Yeah. What's the diminishing return of uh, picking out a new logo as your business grows? Like after how many times? Is it's a hard question. Burton Snowboards keeps changing their logos over and over and over again, although they always kind of use the same one. I would say that if your logo isn't identifying you, which is, I think, the real thesis of the whole thing that has to identify your company, it's worth reinvesting in. But invest strongly in it because, again, it's going to be holding up for a while. Even Twitter just barely changed their logo. I think a few years ago they do change it 45 degrees and, and kind of move it. But, but that's, I guess, does that answer your question? I'm sorry, something to... Yeah. I don't know if I complete it. Yes? Uh, please don't answer totally correct, okay? Sure. <laughs> What's your favorite logo if you have to choose one? Oh, gosh. Of anything? Ooh. What's, oh, sorry. I keep forgetting to repeat the questions. What is my favorite logo? Um, gosh. I, I love stuff like GE. I love the classic stuff. I'm always really inspired by Art Deco and that kind of old school thing. Um, that's, that's one. Just one, jeez. <laughs> My new favorite logo of this week, I looked at the old John Deere logo from like 1852 or whatever. Some old John Deere logo, if you type in Google, you'll find it. And it's just beautiful and it looks, it looks hand done and I think it's great. But it changes for me all the time. It's hard. It's like picking your favorite kid, right? <laughs> I got 13, so I don't know who. Uh, any, oh, yes? If, if we were going to hire a designer to design a logo, Right. Okay. Sure. Sure. So the question is, if you're going to pick a designer to make your logo, what should you look for? Um, he should be about five eight, 155 pounds. No, look, look, look in their, look in their portfolio, and I would say uh, use some of maybe what you took away from today. See if the logos they've designed for other people do the things that a good logo needs to do. Does it scale? Will it work across multiple mediums? If we're going to change our color palette, will it change? Um, and then it just comes down to style. I mean, really, at the end of the day, if you like, there's, there's a whole movement of people making hand-drawn kind of looking logos. There's an artist named John Contino, stuff I just love. He did the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue stuff just in a book of life and a lot of different stuff recently. If you like that style, pick them. If you like someone who does very angular graphic styles, there's going to be someone else who does that style really well. So I would say it's, it's a combination of those two things. But definitely look for the main criteria. Does it scale? Does it look good in black and white? And those kind of those kind of questions, and don't pay five bucks for it. I got ten minutes. It's a lot of questions. I don't know about. One. I, I don't often look for logo designers myself. But the question is, where do you look for a good logo designer? Um, dribble, <laughs> yeah. Dr dribble meetings. Uh, uh, I, I've met some great logo designers at AIGA meetings. Um, even even sometimes stuff pops up on Instagram, and I find designers, and I'm like, wow, I never heard of this person before, and that's that's where I find it. But it's it's hard to pin down one spot because it's everywhere right now. Um, but certainly, yeah, Dribble's a, a good one to go to to check out some stuff, I guess. Yeah. Also, if you just see a company's logo you really like, look it up. You'll be surprised. You'll probably find the answer. I'll take you in a quote. Yeah. Oh, I see. So the question is, if you get a logo from a designer, and how do you know if it's copyright free? I, I don't really have a good answer for that. I mean, I, I assume I, I don't I don't really know. I would just do your research. Fine, fine. Say again. Oh yeah, Google image search. That's a good one. See if it's already been out there. Oh. Did you hear his answer? So it says do a Google reverse image search. So you put the you drag the image into Google and then it will generate back and let you know if the image has been used before. Yeah, 
Exactly. A lot in the pro has to do with the process. With like the Fiverr people, that's what you get. Sort of like they just throw you a logo. A, a, a designer will show you the process with their designing it. If they're truly just copying someone else and gone through all that trouble to draw it by hand first and then show it to you, then, well, that doesn't have much integrity, does it? But uh, yeah, that's I guess maybe a way to There's answer. Also a website called Trademarkia that's a imagery work, uh, Similar to Google. Work. Yeah, Printmarkia. Yeah. yeah. There's a, she said there's a website called Print Markia. Am I Trade Markia. Okay, and that's where you'd go to to find out. Any other questions? We're good. All right. Thank you very much.